Hi and welcome to another video from Costa Rica. As you can see, I'm out here on the water in a canoe on a lagoon. Um, it's just very nice here because as you can see, I'm a bit in the shadow. The water also helps to give this a bit colder microclimate because up there in the sun, it's getting very warm and I cannot take pictures anymore because the light is quite harsh. So I arrived at this place uh, two days ago and before I was at the Rio Celeste, this Turkish um, river trying to take some landscape pictures and now here I'm up more for wildlife because as you can see the water here is not so nice that I could take nice landscape pictures. Uh, also in the Rio Celeste I was able to swim a bit here I don't recommend it. Uh, yesterday I went out for a small night tour um, and I saw five caimans around here so I'm quite happy I'm in this canoe and can tell you a bit about what kind of pictures I was already able to do now, uh, what my highlights were and some of the challenges I was facing. So when I arrived here two days ago, it was pretty much noon, so quite harsh light and there was not many uh, clouds in the sky. So I decided to first have a look in the forest because sometimes in the forest, if you get a bird in the shadow and there is not too much sun in the background, maybe one or two small flares, but not too much, you can still get away with some quite nice pictures. Unfortunately, the activity was very low and I think this is one of the challenges. As soon as it gets warm, the bird activity goes down. So your best guess is usually to use the morning hours or the evening hours when it's still fresh or wait for when it's getting overcast or rainy. Uh, anyway, this gives a nicer kind of, uh, well, lightning and mood for the pictures in my opinion. However, rain in the forest will lead to really, really dark uh, shots. So I usually try to go to the forest when it's a bit brighter. Anyway, not much luck with the birds in the forest. However, we did find some insects, some lizards, and also some amphibians, uh, to be more specific, some small frogs, red frogs. And I really wanted to take some pictures of these. So I tried it with the RF 100 millimeter macro that Canon gave me for this trip. Unfortunately, these frogs, they are very tiny and they were quite shy. So they didn't let me get very close. So the next thing I tried was the RF 100 to 500 because it has a fairly good magnification. You have a, a minimum focal focus distance of uh, I think 1.2 meters at 500 millimeters. So I used this one, I threw in the 1.4 extender, which gave me, I would say close to 700 millimeters because there is a bit of this focus breathing, but it's not too bad. And I managed to get some shots, even though it was getting kind of dark at some point, I need to admit. Um, and I managed to get some shots handheld. One problem was that the shutter speed was getting really slow and you might think that the RF 100 to 500 has a very good image stabilizer and that's certainly true but for all lenses as soon as you go in this macro close distance the image stabilizer gets much worse. I had this also with the RF 100 macro it's just a phenomenon um, so keep this in mind if you do some pictures of dragonflies frogs or whatever you need a bit shorter shutter speeds than if you just take birds that are, I don't know, five or 10 meters away. I will be back in a second. I'm just drifting a bit off into the sun here where the filming is not good. <laughs> okay, I repositioned the canoe. Hopefully it's fine now. Um, yeah, the ideal lens here, I think would have been the RF 100 to 400 millimeter because it has a closer minimum focus distance and a bigger magnification. The only problem with this lens is it's back home in Switzerland. So I needed to use what I had and I was still quite happy with the shot. A bit later in the afternoon when the sun was already a bit lower, um, I went down to the lagoon because as you might can see here, or at least believe me, is that the lagoon is in the lowest point and then the kind of the terra is going a bit up. So, and there's some trees. So down here you have shadow a bit earlier. And then I was trying to take some pictures of these lizards that can speed over the walk over the water, uh, which is just amazing to witness. I didn't manage yet to get a nice video sequence. I hope I will this afternoon, but I already got some pictures when they were more resting on a small branch or twig that was sticking out of the water. And I also managed to take some pictures of some kingfishers. I saw two species. 
Um, I think the small one could be the Amazonas Kingfisher. I will verify this. And there was a bigger Kingfisher, but I just saw it from far away a couple of times. Actually, also now when I went in here with the canoe, I hope I will also be able to take pictures of this one. But of the first one, it worked out very nicely. There was a, a low hanging branch from a tree with some leaves. So a very natural scene and environment. And with uh, my 1.4 extender on the 600 millimeter f4 so 840 millimeters of reach i managed to get some quite nice shots the next morning started very nicely um, we went to a height to take pictures of the king vulture a species i wanted to take pictures of for quite a while and i've only paid once in my lifetime if i remember correctly to go in a height and this was in spain for the northern goshawk and there you needed to go into the height uh, around one hour before sunrise. Um, it was behind this mirror glass. You were kind of advised to have rather dark clothing. I even put some black gloves just to be sure. I mean, it was also January, so the gloves were anyway not hurting. And you should not make any sudden movements. You could not use your phone because the screen would make some light. And this mirror glass is nice, but it's not perfect. If you have light behind, you can still see it. So I was expecting something a bit similar than this, but it was completely different. Um, the guide told us he will let us know when we can come to the vultures, um, but they're not very active in the early morning, rather around nine-ish. Then we went there and I was assuming, okay, maybe it has like an underground entry or something that the vultures don't see us, but no, it was just uh, a hide with, made out of wooden structure with some kind of foil around or net around and then a quite big opening. I hope you can see it in the pictures. And when we arrived, there was already one king vulture perched and a lot of black vultures around us. And the nice thing is they really didn't care about us. So we could move freely. And I always like to be able to move around just to get a bit the best background because sometimes I feel like if I do two steps to the left or to the right or go a bit higher or lower, I get a completely different and better background or sometimes even foreground. It worked very nice overall. The biggest challenge was probably to have one of the vultures isolated and not many others in the background. And the second thing that was not always easy was that there was sometimes the sun coming through. And since it was already between nine and 11 in the morning, the sun was getting quite harsh. So sometimes we just needed to wait for some clouds to appear. I was shooting mostly with my 600 millimeter f4 mounted on the r5 but sometimes this was almost too much focal length and i wished for something a bit shorter i also had the 70 to 200 um, 2.8 um, on the r10 and sometimes also on the r5 i used this for some flight shots um, but i would have wished the rf 100 to 300 i'm really thinking about buying this lens next year um, we will see, but this was one of the occasions where it would have been very useful because the 70-200 was a bit short. Um, the 100-500 would have been an option and I had it with me, but there the background blur is not the nicest with this aperture and usually the bigger the birds, the harder it is to get a clean background. So yeah, I will keep thinking about buying the RF 100-300 or not. It's an expensive buy, so a purchase, so I, I will think about it. Um, yeah, we stayed there for the morning. I managed to get some quite nice shots. I used also the um, 600 millimeter on the R10. So I got like 960 millimeters or something for some portraits of the vultures. This worked very well as well. Um, afterwards, we went back for lunch and in the afternoon there were some clouds moving in, which was quite nice because the activity at the feeders of the lodge was then a bit increasing. And also, as I said, like out in the under this clear sky, you don't want to take pictures at two in the afternoon. The light is just way too harsh. And afterwards, it was starting to even rain a bit, which I really like. And then playing with these longer shutter speeds and getting some nice pictures of the birds that came to the branches. There were some uh, honey creepers, uh, different songbirds, woodpecker, and my favorite, the toucan. And it was the first time I really saw a toucan up close. And it's just an amazing bird. I mean, so iconic with this kind of oversized uh, beak um, and also the colors and also the way it moves. It's hard to describe, but I, I really was amazed and liked it and took some pictures. And yeah, I just want to show you now some more pictures I took um, yesterday afternoon and also this morning. And you will also see what I will still able to do this afternoon. Uh, fingers crossed. I hope you enjoy the videos and pictures. See you next time. Thank you.